What's going on guys? I'm JJ Rockets and today we are going to be talking about learning a new character from scratch, aka D-Rusting 2.0. In this series we're going to be documenting my journey from switching from a Diddy main to an Aegis main. Without further ado, let's jump into it. For the past three years I have been living in Korea teaching English and I haven't really been going to tournaments very often. The last time I was at a tournament was in February 2020, where I won a tournament with Diddy Kong. Last night was my first tournament since then, and as you can see by the bracket, things did not go so well. This is because I'm trying to pick up Aegis, and this is a character I've never played before. I mean, I say never played before, but like I played online a little bit before the tournament, but I'm basically a complete beginner is what I'm saying. I went from being a pretty strong Diddy to now a terrible garbage player, essentially. Why am I doing this? Well, I presented this challenge to myself. I wanted to see how far I can take a new character without playing Diddy Kong. So my challenge has two parts. Part one, make it onto the Chicago PR without ever using Diddy Kong. And part two, win an offline tournament without using Diddy Kong. So. Why not play Diddy Kong, and why play Aegis? This comes down to two major reasons. Reason number one is that I just don't really enjoy playing Diddy anymore. I've played Diddy Kong since 2009 in Brawl, I played him all through Smash 4, I played him all through Ultimate until the pandemic hit. And like, after so long, I just got bored of playing him. And out of any character in Ultimate, I've been having the most fun just playing Aegis, so that's reason number one, I just have more fun. And really, if you're playing this game and you're not having fun, then like, what are you even doing? Reason number two is that Diddy and Aegis are just completely different. So as a Diddy main, I found that I've very relied on having a banana, something that I can like hold and sit in shield and just wait for my opponent to make mistakes. And I just win that way. If I play any other character, I don't have that like crutch to lean on. So I have to figure out how to actually play this video game. Reason number two, I don't have a command grab. I don't have projectiles. All these things that like I always used to rely so much on when I played Diddy, I now don't have as an option. So I see it as like I have to actually learn how to play a new character and learn how to play this game a little bit more than I ever needed to know how to before. Before I go into how I'm going to try to level up my Aegis, I want to talk about this sports psychology concept called the four stages of competence. This is like a, a pyramid where everyone learning a new skill of anything, so it could be like learning a game, learning a new character, learning how to like cook or like whatever. It could be anything. You start at the bottom of this pyramid and as you get better at it, you work your way up. Starting from the bottom stage called unconscious incompetence and at the peak is unconscious competence. So let's just go over the stages and I'll explain why this applies to me so heavily. So in the bottom stage is called the unconscious incompetence. This is the stage where you're just so bad at this skill or this game that you just don't even know what you don't know. So if you think about just like a vast sea of knowledge that there is to know with it, we'll just use Aegis as an example through all this. Uh, so just think about everything that there is to know about a character, right? You have your combos, how to edge guard, how to juggle, how to ledge trap, how to recover, how to play neutral. There's all these concepts that go into playing a character at a high level. But when you're like me and you don't know what you're doing with this character, you don't even realize like what like specific game knowledge things that you have to know to be good at those. Like I don't I don't know what combos even exist with Aegis, for example. So I don't even know what I don't know, and that is a problem. Now, when you're at this stage, there's two different ways that you can deal with this stage. Uh, number one, which obviously is the recommended one, is to accept that you're bad and just focus on your improvement, and that will help you level up to the next stage. But this is a trap that a lot of people fall into, where they fall victim to the Dunning-Kruger effect. Now, if you haven't heard of this, it's basically an explanation for why some people that are really terrible at a game falsely think that they are actually good at the game. And the reason for this is because they don't know enough about the game 
they don't even realize how little they actually know. They don't see that vast sea of knowledge because they're so bad that they don't even know that it exists. So because of that, they think, oh yeah, I know most of what there is about this, this character or this game, so I'm actually pretty good, and my confidence is like through the roof. But as you keep getting a little bit better, a little bit better, you start to, the sea of knowledge opens up and you realize, all right, I'm actually kind of shit at this game, right? And then eventually you can start actually getting good and good and good until you become an expert and your confidence is high once again because now you know that you're good. So my, my idea is I want to skip this Dunning-Kruger effect stage. I want to skip over thinking I'm good. I'm going to just accept that I'm bad from the beginning and then maybe I can go from like this corner and just start climbing up to begin with instead of going through this ridiculous hoop that like makes you feel like garbage because you think you're good and then you realize you're not. Anyways, the next stage is conscious incompetence. This is the point where you're still bad, but you finally realize that there is this open sea of knowledge in front of you and that you realize you're bad, but you can see what areas you can still improve upon. And that kind of gives you a direction to keep getting better and start climbing the rankings. The third stage is conscious competence. Now, in this stage, you're finally good at the game, and you know that you're good at the game, but you have one drawback. And that drawback is that the game is always in your conscious. You're always thinking about the game to be good at it. And it takes a lot of focus to actually perform at a high level. So if you start autopiloting, for example, you just lose because you have to be thinking really hard about everything you're doing which kind of contrasts with the final stage, which is unconscious competence. So this is where you're so good at the game that now it's like second nature to you. So you don't even have to think about it. You can play the game well without like putting forth any effort at all. So like even your autopilot is really strong. So if you're really good at a game, I don't know what games you play, probably Smash if you're watching this channel, but like you're holding the controller and like you're just pressing the buttons you're not even thinking about it, but you're still doing like amazing things. If you ever had that feeling in any game, that means you've reached this unconscious competence phase where you're not even thinking about what you're doing. It almost feels like the buttons are just pressing themselves and it's really satisfying. So yeah, that's my quick spiel about the, the four stages of competence and how I want to go from the bottom to the top. But this raises one big question. How can I move up the pyramid? First of all, I have to accept that I'm going to be horrible for the while. Like, with Diddy, I know what I'm doing, I know how to, to combo, I know how to set up my kills, I know how to ledge trap, but I don't know any of that. So I'm just going to be bad, my results are going to be bad, but I'm going to be getting better every time I play the game, and that's the important part. However, I want to spend the majority of my time just taking in information. So I want to find out, like, how I'm supposed to ledge guard properly, how I'm supposed to ledge trap properly, how am I supposed to juggle properly, all these things, I need to just first take in the information, internalize it, then once I'm in the, the conscious incompetence phase, then I can start working on applying those things to my game and move up the phases from there. So first of all, I have to just try to find out what things I still have to learn. How will I do this? Step one is I'm going to be using YouTube guides. Nowadays, I think it's really easy to find good guides for almost any character in the game. Here I just searched for Pyramithra guide, and as you can see, there are a lot of guides available. From MKLeo, Esam, Izaw, Void, and there are even more that just didn't fit on my screenshot. So I think it's really useful to get a perspective from a lot of different top players. And even players that aren't necessarily top players, you can still learn new things from. So I'm going to watch all the guides, and I'm going to take notes and figure out a pretty general idea of what my next areas to improve on are. Step two is going to be joining Discord servers. Now, if you don't know about Smash Chords, it's a website that kind of like organizes all the discords for characters, for like local scenes, general discussions, and tournaments. And it puts them all into one section, or like one website, I mean. So if you're like a, trying to pick up a new character, I always think one of the best places to start is just joining that character's Discord server. 
and there you can kind of connect with like-minded people that are also doing what you're doing of trying to get better with that character and you can learn a lot from all these other people that are playing the same character as you you can find out matchup tips you can find guides everything is available there i highly recommend it i will put the link in the description below if you don't know about smash chords next is going to be of course watching top player vods this is really good because it gives you an idea of what's working at top level play and it's really easy to just like oh i see like this combo now i can take it and put it into my practice and then just emulate what the top players are doing and you'll just naturally get better that way if you just find somebody that's better than you and you emulate what they do you'll do better however all the different top players do have different play styles so i think it is important to watch different players not just one and kind of kind of pick different things like oh spargo does this really well cosmos does this really well and just see what meshes with your own play style and see what you can incorporate into your play and the last thing i want to talk about in this video is an app called notion i have in the past that talked about this app before so if you some of my viewers probably know about it but if you don't uh, notion is a note-taking application that syncs between all of your devices and it makes it really or easy to organize your notes into folders and subfolders so if i type out my notes on my computer I can then like go onto my phone later and if I'm at a tournament for example I can be like oh I'm about to play against like I don't know Captain Falcon pull out my phone read my Captain Falcon notes really quick and then I'm ready to go into the match with a lot of knowledge I did build this smash notebook template that I will be using if you're interested in the template again link is in the description below I highly recommend it if you've never seen it before, but I'll just go over it really quickly because this video is already a little bit long. This is my Smash Notebook template. I have a bunch of different subfolders. I think the most important one is probably matchups, where here I've listed every character in the game. And say you want to talk about Sonic, right? If you want to see your Sonic notes, you can just hit open and you have a whole page of Sonic notes. So you could be like, oh, watch out for Spin Dash. Watch out for Spin Dash. Put that in your notes, it's saved. Now if I go on my phone, same notes will be on there. But I really like this because it has like these subfolders, you can open up Sonic. And not only that, if you have specific things about this matchup, you can put a page within a page and start, it, like even within here, you can have a page within 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 a page. And so on, I'll stop talking. But yeah, it's really useful. You can just organize everything really well. I put onto this like little grid that you could put your matchup ratios in. So you can say like, oh, this is 60-40. This is 70-30. This one's plus 54. However you want to do your matchups, you can do it any way you want. I also have it where you can put your bands on here. Like, oh, band Battlefield and Final Destination against this character. Counterpick Town and City and Lilat. These are kind of old. I don't have some of the newer stages or an updated stage list. But you get the idea. I'll, I'll fix it. And then outside of just the matchups, I have like the combos. You can put list your combos to practice on there. Neutral, uh, just talk about your neutral game. Advantage, which I have separated into three folders. Juggling, edge guarding, and ledge trapping. They all have a sub page. Same thing with disadvantage. I separated it into recovering, avoiding KO options, and proper DI. And VOD notes, so you can put in, like say you're watching Spargo, against Cosmos and uh, Cosmos is playing Pyramithra at the tournament Insane Tourney 7 except yeah you don't want to mess up that capitalization oh what the heck no I don't want that big O Insane Tourney 7 and this this happened on November 24th and then the link youtube.com slash insanity and then you can put your notes in here, talk about the match, whatever. But you get the idea, this is my Smash Notebook template. I will be using this for Pyramithra, and I will make my whole notebook will be public, so anybody can go and look at the notes that I'm taking. I'm gonna talk about the notes in the videos, so you'll actually see me putting my notes together. You'll know the exact things that I'm working on, what things I'm practicing. So I think this will be an interesting series. I hope you guys find it entertaining. And hopefully next week I'm going to place higher than ninth at the local. We'll see what happens. Once again, thank you guys for watching. 
Links for all my templates and things are in the description below. Definitely check it out, and I'll see you next week.